Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Michael Subterman. I do everything to do with Blender and design. So today we're going to be uh, learning how to create a game style potion bottle. Uh, and I'll throw up uh, an image here on screen so you can see what exactly we're doing today. Um, and we're going to go through the whole process starting from a starter Blender file all the way in uh, into modeling, texturing and staging, uh, as well as rendering the final product. So first things first, uh, here, as you can see, we have a standard Blender um, setup here with uh, just a completely new file. And just note that I'm on the Cycles Render Engine uh, with 256 samples in the viewport and 1024 samples in the render. Uh, so yeah, and just so you guys can follow along, uh, you can see what I'm pressing on the screen at the bottom right here. Okay, so first, uh, let's just highlight everything on the screen here and press X to delete. Uh, and let's add in a UV sphere. Now let's just press numpad one in order to go into the front orthographic view. Press S to scale it down and Z to bring it, a GZ to bring it up. And let's add in a subdivision surface modifier with uh, one level and shade that smooth. So now we have the base of our potion bottle here. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode go to face select here uh, and let's select these faces here and press E to extrude up to create the neck and the entrance to our potion bottle. So now, although the shape is looking slightly strange, we could tap back into edit mode, press control R to add a loop cut, click and drag it all the way up and then do the same thing towards the bottom of the bottle. Okay. Still in edit mode, let's go back to face select and let's just select these faces at the top like uh, earlier and press X and delete faces so we can have uh, the entrance to our potion bottle. Um, we're also noticing some kind of strange geometry here. So let's go into edit mode, uh, go into edit mode and go into the X-ray vision, select edge select and let's kind of press alt and click the loop here and then just press S to scale it up and then GZ, GG to move it along its normal and let's do the same for um the second loop here uh yeah and that looks a little bit better let's just increase the subdivisions to two and now we have a basic shape for our potion bottle so now we want to add a solidify modifier because this is looking a little thin right now so let's add a solidify modifier and remember to move it above the subdivision surface modifier uh, and let's just increase the thickness uh, to something like that. There you go. Uh, so now we have uh, just like the normal, kind of like the default look for a potion bottle. So let's press Shift A and add in a cylinder. Press S to scale it down, GZ to bring it up. Let's scale it up to fit. And let's create a cork to plug uh, the potion bottle here. So press one again to go to front view. Um, Go into edit mode, click edge select, click alt click the edge and press control B in order to bevel, bevel that edge and scroll up on the mouse to create more geometry, something like that. Yeah, and let's go into x-ray view and let's press alt click on the bottom here and press S to scale it down. Something like that and press control B again to bevel it into a cork shape. Let's increase the scale of that and press GZ to bring it down. Something like that. And it's kind of kind of thick. So let's press S, Shift and Z. Like that. And finally, let's right click and shade smooth. So now we have uh, our bottle and our cork, but we need to add the liquid inside of the bottle to make it look convincing. So again, let's tab, let's click the bottle, tab into edit mode, click face select and go into x-ray vision. Uh, and let's just highlight the bottom half of the bottle and press shift D to duplicate and then right click to keep it in place and then press P and separate that by selection. So now we have this second mesh here that's going to act as the liquid in our bottle. So let's press S to scale it down and just move it in place s and then x to move it like that and we have our liquid so let's press slash on the keyboard to go into 
uh, local view here and let's just temporarily disable the subdivision by clicking this little computer icon here on the modifiers tab uh, and let's uh, alt click the edges again and press F to just you know kind of cover the top and control B to bevel it again and we can re-enable the subdivision surface modifier and we have a liquid surface so now we have this bottle the cork and of course the liquid inside we're going to make sure we're going to need to make sure that when we move the bottle the liquid and the cork moves along with it so click the cork and then click the bottle using shift and left click press Control p and set parent to object and keep transform and so now when we move the bottle the cork will follow along with it but for the liquid we need to do something a little different so let's click the liquid here and go to the objects constraint tabs and click child of and then click the target and then high, uh, click the bottle that we just created and remove the rotation values this way the liquid will move with the bottle when we move the bottle with g but will not move when we rotate the bottle in different directions so then it acts like a real liquid so just like that we have finished the modeling section of this tutorial and we can move on to texturing the bottle to make it look more realistic Okay, so now we're ready to texture our potion bottle. So let's come here to the left, top left corner and just drag out a new window. And again, go to the top left and let's change this to shader editor. This way we can see in a node based system how the texture is going to look like on our potion bottle. So let's click the potion bottle and let's add a new material and let's call it uh, potion bottle. Uh, and looking at this here, we can look at the principal BSDF, which is going to control all of the settings for our texturing. So let's change the base color. But as we can see, the mesh itself doesn't change its color when we change the base color here. And the reason for that is because we are not in um, rendered view. We're in um, solid view. So let's switch over to viewport shading into rendered view here, shift A, and let's add in a light just so we could see what we're doing here. So let's click the bottle again, and let's increase the transmission all the way to one. So you can see what's going on here, and we can reduce the roughness all the way to something like 0.1 or 0.2, something like that. I actually like 0 0.01. Yeah. So now we can see right through the glass bottle and we can see the liquid inside. And we can even see like there's some reflections from the light above, but we don't have to worry about that for now. So that's gonna be our bottle and let's just add a little tint of a color here, something close to white, something like that. Uh, and we can move on to texturing the liquid. So let's add in a new texture, let's call this potion liquid and this one is going to have a slightly more complicated uh node setup so let's try shift a let's add in a layer weight shift a again and let's look for a color ramp uh yeah okay let's connect the facing of the layer weight to the factor of the color lamp but before directly connecting the color ramp to the emission let's add in a mix and set it to color so let's set the color of the color ramp to the factor and the result of the mix to the emission so now we have an emissive texture that we've created here and now we just need to adjust the colors in order to make it like a reddish color like you would see in a health potion so let's first reduce the blend to something like 0.3 and let's add in this color and change it to black and change the B value color to something a little reddish like so. And let's change this from linear to ease. And let's uh, bring that white value down a little, something like that. Uh, Okay, so that's looking quite good, but the base color is still white. So let's change that to something like a little red. So then we have kind of this very deep and bright red color uh, showing in the potion bottle now. So that's going to be our liquid texture for the bottle.
Now let's texture the cork, which is the final part of the potion bottle. And let's call this a uh, potion cork. And let's change the color to like kind of like a brownish color that you would see in a cork. But in corks, typically there's some imperfections that we can add in to kind of show that it's been kind of through some wear and tear. So instead of just adding the base color like that, let's shift A and let's add in a color ramp. And then shift A again and look for a noise texture and connect the factor of the noise texture to the color ramp and then connect the color of the color ramp to the base color. Let's change this to that brownish color that we were looking for earlier and as well as this one to a similar one but a little darker. So now you can see some speckles on the cork bottle. Let's increase the scale a little bit, increase the detail. Uh, uh, the distortion by a very little, like 0.8. Uh, and now let's add in a bump node. Uh, and this will give our cork some, you know, some little bit of texture, a little bit of layering. Let's connect that noise texture directly into the height. And let's reduce the strength all the way down just so it, you know, it kind of juts out a little bit. Mm, no, we need something even less. Something like that. You know what, let's increase it to something like 0.1. And I think that that's quite sufficient for what we need right now. So now we have finished texturing the bottle. We're ready to, uh, we're ready to, you know, stage it and create some lighting and to make it more, look more realistic. Back now and let's start staging this potion bottle to make it look a little bit more realistic. First of all, let's go back into the viewport here and press shift A and add in a plane and just press S to bring that out and really scale it out. Uh, and already it's looking slightly better with a surface for the potion bottle to stand on. Um, let's delete this light for now and I know it's a little bit dark, but we'll adjust that pretty soon. Uh, so let's just click the potion bottle and press R to rotate it and let's kind of like lay it on its side here. and. Let's begin to kind of tweak the settings of the world and the lighting so we can get a little bit of a nicer um, render. So on the shader tab here, let's go to object and go to world. And let's change the color of the background to something like something like a slight purple value there, which I think I kind of like. And going back into the viewport, we can press shift A and let's add in a an area light like we did earlier. Let's press GZ to bring it up like this. Let's go into front view using numpad one. And let's kind of just uh, play around with the lighting and see what we could get. Let's, let's make this a little smaller first. Okay, so let's click this and let's go here to transform the pivot point to the 3D cursor. You can also just press period on the keyboard and change this to 3D cursor for a median point. And let's press R, X, something like 45 degrees, something like that. And now we can press R, Z, and we can just kind of play around with the lighting like that. So let's kind of add some backlighting like, like this until we get some shadows that we really like. Um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Something like that. And maybe let's... Uh, press G and ZZ to kind of scale it on its local Z axis to bring it out a little like that. And let's just change the strength here to something like 50. Maybe that's a little too strong with something like 25. And let's change the color um, to this purple-ish color. And let's change the shape to an ellipse. Change the... Something like that. Let's press click the light again, press shift D to duplicate, right click to keep it in place. And let's again, RZ and just put it over to the other side here. And GZZ, let's bring it out a little and let's do the same with this. Okay. And now let's change this color to a little bit of a warmer color, something like that. And instead of purple, maybe let's go with something like blue. So we have the two contrasting colors here and let's add in a camera. So let's go shift A and click the camera icon here. 
press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and press N, go to view and we can click camera to view. So let's zoom out here and kind of just position our camera in a way that we like it. Something like that. Let's click out of this. Don't forget to click out of this. Uh, and let's get back into this. So I kind of like where we're going with the lighting, but I like the background to be a little darker for this scene. Let's do something like that and then just change the lighting to something more of a backlight there. Uh, and let's increase this maybe to 30. So the idea is just to play around with these values until you get um, until you get a you know, until you get uh, a result that you really like. Again, I'm going to go back to the camera and zoom out here. Uh, and now what we can do is we can mess around with the camera settings. Let's click the camera. Let's uh, click the focal length here and let's increase it to zoom in a little on our object. Uh, again, let's adjust the camera as we need to. Let's uh, increase this a little more. Okay, and that looks pretty good, I would say. So now we're ready to render. Um, but before that, there's actually a few more things that we could do here. We could change the film and we could change the exposure of the entire scene here if you would like to do that. Uh, another thing is that if you want to render this as a transparent image, you could always click transparent here. But I'm not going to mess with any of those settings for the time being. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is and we'll see the final render. So just like that, we've finished rendering our game style potion bottle right here in Blender. And it's a very high definition render with 1024 samples, despite being a fairly low polygon model itself. We could see all the detail in the cork here, uh, the liquid, how it turns from black to red, and we could also see uh, the light reflecting off the bottle here uh, on the glass. So that is the end of the tutorial, everybody. And I hope all of you learned something from this video. So thank you again, everyone, for watching today. And please go down and hit the like and subscribe button because it really will help my channel to grow in the future. Uh, please also click the notification bell in order to get notified every time I upload a new video. So yes, thank you everyone again and I will see you next week. Goodbye.